All right, guys, we are back. Happy Monday, happy new year. Let's do some reverse lunges as we get our arm circles going. Okay, so we got a lot going this week. The challenge has just been launched. Today is day one. Trying to get our exercise routine down. Consistence and our diet dialed in. And let's go big with the arms. So I'll have some information at the end of this session to give you guys some tips on how to eat a little more healthy. And let's reverse it. Man, it's hard to think and do movements. Let's go reverse the direction of the arm. Go medium-sized circles. Stepping it out. We'll go big. Now, in terms of the workouts, here's what's going down this week. We're doing blast from the past theme. Meaning that we're gonna, I've sifted through some of our old workouts and found some gems that I wanna bring back. And, and this is one of them, this is called the, or actually I got this workout from some Cirque du Soleil performers. And I really enjoy this one. It's a 30 minute workout. We're gonna be going nonstop essentially. And it's called Bobby's. Be a great way to kick off the week. You can, Dial up or down the intensity as you like. But this is just day one of five. We got a big week ahead of us. Let's go up and down. And shake it off. Ooh, it's actually getting, getting toasty already. So let's. Bring our hands down to the floor. Bring them up to the sky. You can come up on your toes if you like, and we'll keep going. For about 30 seconds. Stretch out the hammies. Reach up. Move at your own pace. Really lift up onto the toes. Opening up the ankles, the toes. Add a little jump in there, which I like to do. Go two more. And we'll get into bird peckers next. Pods are still feeling it from last week. All the damage that was done. The many, many lunges. Hundreds. Hundreds of lunges were done last week. Out about 10 more seconds. All right, one more per side. Ooh. And let's send one leg back. Drop your hands down, hips down. Move those hips around. Press back into downward dog as we, and then we'll step the other leg forward and drop the hips down. With every transition, we'll press back into downward dog. Get these shoulders to warm up as well. And let's switch back, pressing downward dog, then stepping the other foot forward. And switch. Pick up the pace so we can get the body to warm up. And switch. Switch. All right, we're gonna go continuous motion, switching back and forth for about 20 seconds. Ready, and go. When you step forward with the foot, drop the hips down, lift the chest up, and then press back. Now you'll get a little deeper stretch in the hip flexor. And 
And last one. Ooh, and we'll bring it up. And then we'll drop it straight down into our squat. Hips down. Nice to go hands on the feet. And we'll gently open up the hips by shifting them from side to side. All right, we'll do a few bootstrappers. So butt goes up in the air. As you pull your chest down, I try to fold in half, and then you can sink your butt back down. Pin the chest up. Your hips up. And hips down. Now at your own pace, we'll go for, how about 15 seconds? Ready and go, or about 15. Strap in. And let's do one more. All right, and we'll settle down into the bottom of the squat. We'll go both hands down. Left hand is gonna rotate up for one. We'll stand up, drop down, and right hand comes up for two. We're doing 30 seconds more of these. I guess you don't need to count. Let's go for time. This one has become so necessary. Go two more. One. Last one. All right, we'll stand it up. We'll go wide with the legs. We'll sink down into our lateral lunge. Woo. Definitely found some tension in here. And we'll guide ourselves to the other side. Ow. And bring it back. And switch. All right, we're gonna switch back and forth continuously now. Go for about 20 seconds and begin. You do it with the assistance of your hands or without. Stand it up, ah, shake it out. Let's do a few of these, what are they called? Old man surfers, send the hips around and reverse it. All right, and we'll go wide with the arms. We'll do tongue twists. Into our windmills and go. That feels good, loosening up the spine and our twisting in and bring it up. We'll go dancer side reach, big reach over the top and other side. We'll do one more per side. And other side. Both hands up into our TikToks. Well, I really need to bring these back in case there are people who haven't experienced these in a workout. Oh, the best, one of the best soreness that there is. This wrecked obliques, serratus. All right, and we'll bring the hands down to the floor. Nice to give you a little double pump, and then reach up and back as you push the hips forward. There is one, we're doing two more. And last one. We'll do some junk, jumping jacks to conclude our warm up. Two, one, and rest. Okay, so like I said, this whole week 
We are gonna do blast from the past workouts and I've chosen some of my favorites. This one uh, is from some Cirque du Soleil performers. And I remember doing this thinking, wow, this is a tough workout. And these people were really in shape as those gymnast circus -y types are. So we're gonna start with a bare plank hand walk in five seconds. So drop down. I've been trying hard and you're gonna walk to the hands out cool. as far as you can. It's not and then walk them back. Can do. And bend your knees so they're hovering just off the floor. I, I can touch the forearms with the knees and then walk back out. It's kind of a warm up move. It doesn't even matter how hard I try. Cause when I hear your voice, my Keep going, kind of a bent down. knee. Boy, Bear crawl where just the hands are moving. I Feet remain want. fixed. There must be a way I can make you really challenging the core. As you walk those hands away. But when it's you and me, me. We go 50 seconds on, 10 seconds to rest, and transition to the next move. Alright, brief little rest. Next we got front to back jumps. These are pretty straightforward. Uh -huh. Forward and backward. Ready? Dig in. Like a continuation of the warm-up but trust me things are gonna get spicy and you can always go faster if you want a little more intensity in your life all right we're warming up the calves the quads we'll warm up the shoulders and the chest coming up next right now. Just starting the journey. It's a 30 minute workout, guys. Five more seconds. And shake it out. Then we got to push up to ankle tap and we're going to alternate. Reaching back with the hand, tapping the opposite ankle. Two, one, begin. There must be a way I can make you see that if we fell in love, you would be so Get more work done, or you go slow and treat it more like a stretch. breaks in between movements. Swimmer is coming up next. Some people really swim, right? Try to stay moving. You know, it seems so simple, but the arms are getting heavy. Thighs off the ground too. Lifting up through that lower back. Twenty more seconds. All right, things are starting to heat up. Okay, jump lunges. Oh, our good old friend, the jump lunge. One. Begin. 50 seconds, non-stop, guys. It's a good place to ramp up the intensity. Bring that heat. Burn. Keep riding it 
it out. Yeah, 18 seconds. Stay with it. Push up, knee to elbow. That's gonna be knee to opposite elbow. Begin. Keeping that core tight. Making it like a crunch. Try to stay in more or less of that plank position. somewhere now. Now lean over the edge into that push up. Oh. Hollow rocks. Something for the abs now. So line your back. Again. Now on a smooth rock, the shoulders, the butt lifts up, and shoulders lift up in the front. You can also bring one knee in, and crunch tight right here. Prioritize a smooth, rocky motion. It shouldn't be jarring at all. Oh. All right, tuck jumps. You stand it up. We're gonna jump and tuck and hit our thighs. He gets right there. I land soft like a cat. about explosiveness in the jump. Be careful with your knees. It's too high impact, do regular squats. Hovering just off the floor. You touch your forearms, then walk it back. The hands are fixed, feet are crawling forward and back. As far back as you can go, laying those abs on. Oh, 
should be feeling those abs. All right, lunge squats. You lunge one side, squat, lunge other side. Begin. Try to stay moving the full 50 seconds. This is a good one to jack that heart rate up and get into the quad burn. seconds. Mm. Low push up hold. Two or three, two, one. Lower down to the bottom. Chest hovering just off the floor. Squeeze your elbows in your sides. Shoulder blades pulling down your spine. Squeeze your butt. Abs are tight, we hold. Entire body is locked down. Abs tight. Squeeze your glutes. Squeeze your elbows in your sides. 12 seconds. Oh, oh my word. Right. Dead bug crunches. Flip over onto your back. Two, one. Your arms out, stretch, crunch. Right here. Opposite elbow. Try to keep your arms and your legs off the floor. Side, 25 on the other. All right, five more seconds on this leg. Two, one, and hop, switch to the other leg. Catch your breath here. And rest. All right, we got a push up. Walk your hands back to a squat, and we walk back out to a push up. Do a squat. Walk your hands down. Push up. Walk back into a squat. Squat, and then right back into our. Walk into push up. Stay moving here. Try to bring your breathing back under control.
bend your knees. Try to touch your ankles. Right, let's bring up the intensity a little bit here. The abs can handle it. little tap right back into it. We'll go 25 seconds on this leg, 25 on the other. Quick tap. Don't even put your weight into it. Just a tap. And switch sides. There was something going on that shade of doubt hanging around got all Ooh. 13 minutes left in this workout. Tricep push ups next. Lower to forearms, press up to pumps. Do this for your knees as well. I know these are tough. Straight back into down dog. Four touches the ground. 
just in front of your hands. Keep your elbows wrapped into your sides throughout this entire motion. Don't let those elbows flare out. up to bird dogs. So we're going to alternate which side we bird dog every rep. Oh, arms are fried. hollow position when you lay back. Oh. We get to catch our breath, alternating curtsy lunges. Curtsy, step to the other side, curtsy. Catch your breath here. 
Just under five minutes left in this workout, guys. Next up, four high knees, two push-ups. We go left, right is one high knee. One, yeah. one, two, three, four, two push-ups. And repeat. Five seconds left. Press, crunch, squeeze. Press, crunch, squeeze. Ten seconds. Press, crunch, squeeze. Last one. Press, crunch, squeeze and hold. Oh, we got a squat hold next. I don't mean the relaxed position, I mean engage. So we'll go down, do the squat, we'll hold, now let's go hips back, hips back, lift your chest up. There we go, we're not relaxed down here. We'll engage, staying a little taller, hips back, chest up. So you feel it in your quads and your hips. Be able to wiggle your toes. Back in the heels. Twenty more seconds. That guy's so close, so close. For the burnout, guys. Two, three, one. Begin. See, pop your hands off the ground. Knees from your knees as well. I thought I caught your eyes. The love is blind. I thought I saw you smile. Seconds left. And ten. Ah. Alright, guys, we got a burpee burn now. This is bonus. Two minutes non stop burpees. Begin. This is the home stretch, guys. 
may move in or take breaks if you need to. Up to you. Get a nice stretch down when we're done. I thought I saw a light when you passed me by. The reason why I shine, you're the reason why. I thought I caught your eyes, the love is blind. I thought I saw. The noodles, hang in there. One minute left, let's pick the pace up a little bit. We'll go all out the last 30. Let's go. Turn it up all the way. Stretch out the abs. Oh, check that out. It says stay hard. <laughs> my, my shirt left an imprint. <laughs> Hips down, chest up. Stretch out the abs a little bit. Then we'll sit back in the child's pose. Counter stretch for the spine. Okay, and we'll stand it up. Oh my word, I can barely stand. So let's go back down into the squat. Let's try to catch our breath here. As we settle in, get comfortable. These hips to loosen up, or just stay loose. Oh man, was that workout exceptionally hard? Or did I stay up too late last night? Did I eat too late? I don't know. We're gonna figure these things out, guys. Throughout this challenge, I want you to try to develop a keen eye. How you feel day to day, and what are the factors that play into how you feel. Nutrition, sleep, the timing of when you eat. All right, let's go. Let's just, we'll go both hands down. We'll rotate one up to the sky. Bring it down. That's one. To the other side. For two, let's go up to 10 reps. We'll call it good. Three. And last 
last one. Ugh. We'll stand it up. Push hips forward and send them around. <sighs> oh man, I'm regretting putting the two minute burpee burnout in there. But that's, that's how it was back in the day. So I had to keep it reverse the direction. So I forgot to tell you guys about that. <laughs> A little surprise thrown in there. All right, and let's send one leg back. Drop the hips down. Move the hips around. And we'll drop down to the forearms. We'll spend about 10 seconds in each position. Oh, what a Monday. I thought this was gonna be a cruise and chill kind of workout. Woo, so much for that. All right, and press back into downward dog and shift your weight from side to side. Move your hips from side to side. And now we'll step that right leg forward or the other leg forward. Hips down, move the hips around. Two, one, and we'll drop down to the elbows. Press back into downward dog. This time, walk out your feet. Walk the dog. As you're pressing back through your palms, through your shoulders, dropping your chest back toward your knees. And now bring your left knee forward. Spin that foot. We'll sit up tall, emperor pigeon. Two, one, let's lay it down for about 20 seconds. Oh, we've made it to this point. Mm. This is a safe place now. No more harm can come to us once we enter the sleeping pigeon. back. Weren't those the most comforting words you've heard in a while? Let's go right knee forward, spin the foot. We're going to associate sleeping pigeon with sanctuary, with peace. down. Let's go to our, our safe place, guys. Sleeping pigeon, you're safe here. to the front, shake them out, hold forward, grab your toes and let's rock from side to side. As you continue to fold forward, get deeper into that hamstring stretch. And let's tuck our left leg behind us. We'll lay back into this quad stretch. Or maybe it's more of a lean back and you're using your hands for support. That works too. Spend about 20 seconds per side. Position your hips such that you feel that stretch on top of your quad.
two, one. Ugh. Release that leg, suck the right leg behind you or the other leg, and we'll lean back onto it. that leg, take it out, let's go hands back behind us, we'll go real quick, we'll drive through the heels, hips up, press through your palms, hold for 10, three, two, one, and lower down, now we're going to get into bridge, and you can press up like this, or just go hips up like that, ready, and go, to help us open up the spine and the shoulders. 20 more seconds. Eight more seconds. And lower down. Boom, we'll gently get that counter stretch where you just bring your knees in. When you're ready, we'll kick the toes up and over the top into our happy snail. bring your legs down. We got about 20 seconds. Hang out in our happy baby. Picking out the legs. Do whatever feels good. And now hug your knees in. And hold them, hold them tight. One, extend your legs, get comfortable guys. Oh, we made it. Ah. Get comfortable. And minute 50 Shavasana starts now. Upgrade complete. Ah. Oh my. Oh, that was 
way harder than I expected, but I feel sensational now. And guys, we are in the challenge. This is day one. Let's get into some of the nutritional information that I've come across this past year that has been so potent for me that it has changed my habits around and my eating behavior uh, because of this knowledge. Just simply the information alone is that powerful. So let's dive into it right now. Aloha guys and welcome to day one of the New Year's health and fitness challenge. I'm gonna share with you guys the information I've been learning. This particular day is gonna be about fruits and veggies and the information, I got this all from Dr. Mark Hyman's book. It's called, What the Heck Should We Eat? If you want to reference that book, it goes much deeper than this, this cursory overview that I'm gonna share with you guys. So if you wanna dive deeper into it, I highly suggest that book. So I've got my notes right here. Let's talk about fruits and veggies. Eat your fruits and veggies. Your, your parents have told you that uh, since you were a kid, but that does not mean that there's equal weight associated to fruits and veggies. Really, you need to eat your veggies. And Dr. Hyman, he suggests 50 to 75% of every meal should be vegetables. And fruit, you should consume, it's great for you. There's a lot of antioxidants, there's fiber, vitamins, minerals in fruit, so it is healthy for you, but you definitely have to moderate the intake of that food, much more so than veggies, which you can consume pretty much uh, without any upper limit on how much you can eat most of the veggies. So let me pull up my notes here. The veggies we're gonna cover first. Here's the first one, fiber. So plant foods are the only source of fiber we have, and that would include wheat and, and other grains and stuff too. But vegetables um, like leafy greens, the cruciferous veggies like kale, cauliflower, broccoli, those all have fiber, and fiber is food for the healthy gut bacteria. There's some new emerging science about the gut being your, your second brain and, and really controlling a lot of functions that we weren't even aware of, like your mood could be based off of these bacteria and what you're feeding them. So really important stuff, you need fiber. And our current American diet, we're getting about one-tenth the fiber that our hunter-gatherer ancestors got. So most people are deficient in fiber. We need to put more veggies into our diet, more fruit as well. All right, number two, as I said, 50 to 70%, 75% of every meal should be veggies. Veggies are also very rich in what are called phytonutrients. But these are very necessary chemicals for vibrant health. It's anti-cancer, anti-inflammation, anti-infection, all that good stuff. So we need veggies. We need lots of various types of veggies, which is my next point, eat the rainbow. That's the most simple way to say it. So get those red bell peppers, those red tomatoes, that deep green kale, all that good stuff, all those different colors, the yellows, the oranges, get it all in there so that you're, you're getting the variety of nutrients from these plants. That's important as well. All right, five most common veggies consumed by Americans. Number one, it's called the Idaho potato and it's normally consumed as French fries, which is deep fried in toxic oils. We pretty much wanna stay away from that. Number two is the tomato, often consumed as ketchup or as marinara sauce, and both of those are loaded with sugars and they're no longer healthy once they've gone through all those processes. Sweet corn, so a starchy, a starchy veggie, so it kind of spikes blood sugar. It's also uh, industrialized, so it's sprayed with tons of harsh chemicals, not very nutritious anymore due to modern farming practices, and it is commonly allergenic, so you wanna stay away from that one. Onions, those are actually pretty good. That's number four. And number five, iceberg lettuce. You know, just one intuitive glance at it and you can tell there's not much happening with iceberg lettuce. So those top five, those are the veggies that we most consume as Americans and they are among the least nutritious for us. So stay away from those. All right, next, organic versus inorganic. Does it really matter? Hell yes, it does matter. Let's just take a look at the big one right here pesticides. You know, I've known for a long time pesticides aren't good for you, but I always opted for, or back in the day, I opted for the conventionally grown produce 
because I'm like, I don't have enough money for this organic stuff. But now that I have gone through the research and see how dangerous a lot of these chemicals are, well, number one, glyphosate is one of the most commonly used pesticides, or it's actually an herbicide, and it's sprayed on everything. Any industrialized food that's non-organic has glyphosate in it. Glyphosate destroys your gut bacteria, and it has a number of other side effect effects. Let me, let me name a few of them. They did some studies on agricultural workers and found that there was an increase in various types of cancer that arose from the people who are picking the fruit that has been sprayed with tons of pesticides. So it's actually a very dangerous profession to do that. Also, they suffered from respiratory issues and depression. So they, they had a marked increase in those ailments. So there's something up there you wanna stay away. The, the World Health Organization, they said this, glyphosate is probably carcinogenic to humans. And Monsanto, they say it's not carcinogenic to humans. So I dug up some other studies and rats were getting tumors from this glyphosate to stay away from that stuff. And this other third party organization, they release a list every year called the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen. So the Clean 15 are the conventionally grown produce that are shown to have low levels of herbicides, pesticides on them. So here's the only relevant one. The avocado is number one because of that hard exterior, not many of the pesticides actually get into the meat of that fruit and affect your health. Also, I know they don't sell organic avos at Costco, so you're fine getting the conventionally grown avos. Uh, you can take a look at that list. I'll put it down in the description, but that's kind of the only relevant one of the clean 15. Now the dirty dozen, some of these will probably scare you. Strawberries are number one for the dirtiest. That means they detected the most pesticide residue on those strawberries from various markets around the country. Number two, spinach. Number three is kale. And this isn't a, a natural fruit, it's the raisin has been processed, but that is actually, shows the highest level of toxic pesticides. And it's also a food that's commonly provided to children. So do not let your kids have raisins. Even organic raisins have been shown to still have some of this pesticide res residue. So you wanna stay away from that stuff. All right, number six, don't overcook your veggies. Let's take it to an extreme, for example. I know this is, a, a, this is meat, but imagine you threw a burger on the grill and you grilled it into this charcoal husk. There's not much nutritional value left in that. So I know that's an extreme scenario, but you can see how the chemistry of the food changes the longer you cook it. And that's the same with veggies. Essentially, the longer you cook it, the more the, the nutritional value starts to decrease. Raw veggies, I'd say, are the best, and you're preserving that nutritional value by eating it raw. But not many people want to eat raw broccoli because that's gross. So you cook it a little bit to make it palatable. Even though some of the nutritional value is lost, at least you're eating some as opposed to none. So that's the thing with cooking your veggies. Don't overcook it into oblivion. And there's actually a few methods of cooking that you should be aware of that I, I didn't know about at first. Steaming is best for no more than, than four minutes because you don't want to overcook it once again. So steaming is best. I don't actually personally steam it. I saute mine in a pan and that's fine too. Also good is roasting. So putting it in a pan and oven cooking it is fine. What you do not want to do is boil it. When you boil it, most of the nutrients you, you uh, cook out into the water and then you dump that water out and you're left with not the best stuff anymore. No nuking it in the microwave. That produces harmful chemicals and no deep frying it because that's just bad for you. <laughs> okay. And lastly, vitamins A, D, E, and K are all fat soluble. So you need to have fat around. If I'm making a salad, a great healthy fat is olive oil. And when I'm cooking, a great fat that I use is coconut oil. So if there's always fat in the meals that I'm cooking or eating raw, like my salads, so that you can properly absorb those vitamins right there. Really important, you will not absorb it if that fat is not present. Also healthy animal fats, butter, seeds and nuts, those things with every meal, really important. All right, let's get into the fruit. All right, fruits are great because they've got the antioxidants, they've got 
the, the phytonutrients, the minerals, the vitamins, all that good stuff, but don't eat too much because they're high in sugar. And sugar spikes, spikes your blood sugar, spikes your insulin. And as we'll get into next week, if you're trying to lose weight, you can't have these massive spikes in insulin that will prevent you from being able to burn body fat. We'll get into more of that next week, but just know that you don't want these big spikes in insulin. So you have to moderate the amount of fruit that you're eating. And the way I do that is I tell myself I have to earn fruit. So if I worked out just like I worked out earlier today, hey, I can have some fruit. And some of the best fruit around are berries. They're very high in antioxidants. And what's kind of unique about most of these berries is they're not super sweet. They're a little on the tart side. So like blueberries, raspberries are some of my favorite. And they're moderate to low glycemic index, glycemic loads. So they don't have those really big spikes in insulin when you consume them. All right, let's go over the most popular fruits consumed by Americans. Number one, orange juice. <laughs> it is bad. This is really bad, guys. Number two, the banana. And number three, apple juice. But orange juice, you know, I used to have, I used to love my glass of orange juice in the morning with my cereal. That is so, so bad for you. The amount of orange juice, and I, I used to have a juicer, so I, I know this, the amount of oranges to create a glass of orange juice is about two to three, depending on the glass size and the size of the oranges. So you're getting all the sugar content of two to three oranges with zero of the fiber. And what fiber does is it slows the intake of those carbs into your bloodstream. When you slow that intake, it creates a lower response of, of insulin from your body. And you want that, especially if you're trying to lose weight once again. And orange juice has the same sugar content as Coca-Cola. So there you have it. So you wanna stay away from drinking fruits. There we go. You want to stay away from drinking fruit. Also, the banana is super high in sugar. It's also very starchy. So it causes, again, that massive spike in insulin. Apple juice, same thing's wrong with that. Now, fructose with fiber is not a problem. So that's what eating a fruit is. Your body can handle it because it processes the sugar more slowly. When you eat a fruit, it's very different than drinking the, the sugar from that fruit. Your, your body has the, this satiety mechanism, the, the mechanism that tells you, all right, I'm satisfied with what I've eaten. When you eat things, those mechanisms are triggered. When you drink things, it doesn't work the same way. So you can, that's why you can drink the sugar content of three to six oranges. But if you were to sit there and eat all of them, your jaw would get tired <laughs> and your body would and your mind would tell you or would turn off that switch of hunger eventually. So do not drink your calories. Do not do that. Uh, so that means fructose without fiber is actually really harmful to you. So in, in things like high fructose corn syrup have been shown, here's a study, two sodas a day for their participants for six months. And what they measured was an increase in liver fat, in muscle fats, triglycerides and visceral or belly fat. So these are all the hallmarks of fatty liver disease, obesity, metabolic syndrome, and diabetes, all these terrible issues that we're dealing with as, a, as an epidemic in the United States. It's essentially because of these fruit juices and sodas, which have high fructose content and zero fiber to help us process it. All right, and then here's the last one. Frozen berries often have more nutrients than fresh. I was unaware of that. So also these frozen berries tend to be a lot cheaper. So I've kind of stocked up on wild organic blueberries and I haven't done the raspberries and blackberries, but those would be great too. They're a little bit cheaper and that's awesome. And the reason for that is they're often picked ripe and frozen right away and preserved in that form until they arrive you know, in your freezer and you use them for whatever. Whereas berries that you find in the supermarket, they are often picked early, transported vast distances, and by the time they ripen, they just don't have the nutrients as if they were picked ripe off the, the vine itself. A note on that one, like what do you do with frozen berries? 
Well, most people put them in smoothies, but smoothies, it's kind of like drinking your calories again. You kind of want to stay away from that. It does break down the fiber and the cellulose structures that slow the intake of those sugars into your bloodstream. So you don't want to overdo it on the smoothies. I know I used to have one every morning. And if you do do that, well, first of all, you want to try and back that off a little bit. But if you're doing that, the way I approached it is you don't want to make them too sweet. If it's too sweet, too enjoyable, then there's too much sugar and it's spiking your blood sugar again and insulin. So put a lot of veggies in there with the berries and I try to ride that edge of barely palatable with sweetness and that uh, astringent taste of the veggies and, and that's a good way to approach the smoothies. All right guys, that is it for fruits and veggies. Let me know if you have any further questions about that down in the comments below and take a look at the Dirty Dozen Clean 15 list if you are going to figure out which veggies and fruits you wanna purchase uh, conventionally and which you wanna purchase organic. For me, the way I do it is everything's organic except for avocados, I will make an exception for those because they're pretty well protected from the pesticides. All right, guys, I'm gonna keep these videos just pure information. There's not gonna be a whole lot of flair to them because I wanna make sure I give you guys all the information. There's a lot to go over this week. Let me know if you have any questions below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Aloha.